Greetings War Thunderers, this is Longshot with you again and welcome to another video in my Analyze This series. The purpose of this series is to examine replays contributed by viewers, looking at what they did right but also at mistakes they may have made and pointing out areas in which they might improve. If you've ever been shot down and wondered how the hell did that happen, then that's the kind of situation I look to analyse in these videos. In doing so I'm hoping it'll be helpful to all of us in learning to recognise and avoid mistakes and thereby improve our flying. Also, please understand that although I do make critical comments in these videos, I'm not trying to belittle or ridicule a player who submitted the replay. They should be praised for their willingness to expose their flying like this for the benefit of everyone who watches. OK, so today's replay was submitted by Trotters, who writes, Greetings Longshot, I have some arcade footage that I would like you to analyse of me flying out of my F6F. The game starts out well with me bomber hunting and diving on climbing fighters. Eventually I get swamped by a BF-109 and a Spitfire, and am finally shot down. I'll just take a moment to look at this kill on a climbing uh, Fogelwolf 190 that tries a very awkward looking head-on evasion that only exposes him to Trotter's guns. OK. After which he lifts up to engage a Fogelwolf 200. Take note of the name of the bomber pilot. It's either Snowl or Snowy. He'll play a starring role in this video. OK, where was I? Right. At some point he'll be swamped by a 109 and a Spitfire and shot down. He asks, I'd like to know how I could have prevented this situation, since I feel the 109 and the Spit could both have outrun me in a dive. Before we get to that, Trotters does indeed go on a bit of a bomber hunting spree. Let's take a look at how he goes about it to get a feel for the tactics he uses. He's already used a lot of vertical manoeuvres. Dropping down to deal with the 190, then lifting up to tackle the 200 from underneath, followed by a split S to take him toward the enemy bomber spawn at good speed. And now he's using the speed from that split S to climb up and engage this PBY, again from underneath. This use of the vertical is keeping his plane nice and fast, and giving him excellent uh, firing solutions at the exposed underbelly of these bombers. He turns toward the bomber spawn again, uh, takes a few seconds to look around, and then Snowy's going to spawn in another bomber, a Henkel 111. Immediately, Trotter's nose is down into a dive. He's pretending he's not interested in the 111, and is instead boom and zooming a target down at fighter altitude. The purpose of this is, is of course to dissuade Snowy from crash diving. The ruse looks even more authentic when Trotter's takes an opportunistic snapshot at a passing A20, but of course that isn't the real target here, the 111 is. Now Trotter's springs the trap by storming straight up at the bomber in his zoom climb. I paused it here because I want to draw your attention to the altitude, just over 3,000 metres, and that's after a zoom climb. On this map the fighter spawns at 2,000 metres and the bomber spawn at 4,000, so obviously Snowy's dived about 1,000 metres, but even so, it shows that Trotter's taking some risks in his drive to shoot down enemy planes. If I were to draw his recent flight path, it would look something like this. By allowing his plane to get that low, he's running the risk of attracting attention from newly spawned enemy fighters. And that's how he ends up getting swamped by a Spitfire and a BF-109. That's not going to happen just yet, but this example demonstrates why he's in danger of that happening. Of course, there's nothing wrong with diving as low as he has. You've just got to make sure that you recover your altitude in the zoom climb, and try not to stop halfway in order to engage a target. Anyway, moving right along. Having set the target alight, Trotter's rolls to avoid its gunners, again dropping underneath the bomber. Fire's gone out, and he's in an ideal position to climb up and set him alight a second time. As soon as he does, he's snap rolling to evade the gunners again and resuming his position underneath. It's a perfect example of how to safely engage a bomber, or one without a ball turret anyway. Now the bomber's down, so he takes the opportunity to refresh his situational awareness. There's an Ishak chasing him, but he hasn't nearly enough horsepower to keep up with a Hellcat. He's a little close for Trotters to try any manoeuvres though, so he just keeps climbing and waits until the Ishak inevitably gives up the chase and dives away. There he goes. Then he loops over into a shallow dive of his own, tracking the Ishak in case he changes his mind and starts climbing again. But no, he's diving away. So, he sets course for the bomber spawn, looking closely at the spawning fighters, just beneath us, in case any of them decide to climb instead of diving into the furball. I haven't seen much looking around like this during the game. Uh, granted, Trotter's been quite busy with a string of targets, but he's getting a little too focused on them. 
he only tends to look around in the paws between targets. I do think he'd benefit from taking a quick glance around on a regular basis while he's engaging an enemy plane. It had lessened the risk of developing tunnel vision and reduced the chance of being blindsided by enemy fighters. Anyway, as you can see, Snowy's spawned in his third plane, this time a Junkers 87 D5 with the extra cannon pods. Trotter's immediately dived to avoid the possibility of facing head on and now he's climbing to attack from underneath as he did twice previously. Not sure why he knows down there, possibly because the D5 started to turn, but Trotter's straight back into a climb and has no problem shooting Snowy down for the third time. By the way, if it looks like he's not leading the target enough, bear in mind it's a replay, as such it doesn't show you exactly what Trotter saw during the game. Anyway, here we go. Trotter's has dived straight over at another target. An I-16 has climbed to engage a friendly SP2M, and Trotter's makes him regret that decision. Time to pause it again, because it's about now that things really start to get interesting. Firstly, Snowy has spawned in his fourth plane, a BF-109F1. He's carrying a dirty great bomb underneath, which he lugs with him throughout the rest of this video, but it's not bombing he has on his mind right now. This guy has had enough. He is out for revenge. His altitude's 2,000 metres, he's doing nearly 400 kilometres an hour. By comparison, Trotter's at 2,800 metres, travelling at 536 kilometres an hour, which should be more than enough to safely zoom climb back to bomber altitude. But the problems start when Trotter's spots a newly spawned PBY behind him. He loops over immediately in order to engage. Pausing it there, he's gained only 200 metres, but has lost 100 kilometres an hour of his speed in that hard manoeuvre. Which would be fine if he was safely up at altitude, but it's very dangerous when hovering only a thousand metres directly over the enemy fighter spawn. He probably should have zoomed climb first, then levelled out and attacked the PBY. Now he's forced to level off at low speed at an altitude of 3,800 metres, and it's here that he realises that he's in trouble. Snowy followed him up, and is now close to getting in guns range, as did a Spitfire Mark 1A. There were three errors that allowed this to happen. And while I discuss them, I'll show you how Snowy ended up in a position to attack. Error 1 was the aforementioned hard loop that wasted 100 kilometers an hour of his zoom climb speed. But why did he perform that manoeuvre? I believe it was due to repeating the same tactic of attacking bombers vertically from underneath, even at the expense of sacrificing his energy advantage rather than manage the energy state of his plane first and foremost, and let that dictate his tactics when engaging. Lastly is the fact that he hadn't checked his 6. From the moment he saw the PPY it was all he focused on, hence he didn't see the threat from two fighters following him in the climb. And that results in another problem. He has no idea how much speed those planes are carrying. He simply knows that they're in guns range and he needs to go evasive. Unlike Trotters, I can pause the game and show you their respective energy states at this point. Snowy's 109 is at 3,400 metres altitude and has practically stalled. The Spitfire is down at 3,100 metres, and also running out of speed after the climb. By comparison, Trotter's Hellcat is at low speed, but with an altitude of 3,900 metres. He has a clear energy advantage on both of his rivals, and could simply have levelled off and climbed away from them. However, Trotter's wasn't to know this. He realises he's been caught, and he has to make a split-second fight-or-flight decision. He was thinking of diving, which would have been my instinctive reaction as well. Trotters felt those planes would outdive him, but could they? I ran some tests. In a dive from 3,800 metres with a starting speed of 170 km an hour, the Hellcat reaches 840 km an hour in 24 seconds before it has to level off. After another 20 seconds of level flight, it's still doing 590 km an hour. Diving from 3,100 metres with a starting speed of 180 km an hour, the Spitfire reaches 770 km an hour before it has to level off after 27 seconds, taking three extra sevens to reach low altitude despite having a shorter distance to dive. After another 20 seconds, the Spitfire is doing 540 km an hour. There's no doubt in my mind that the Hellcat would have escaped the Spitfire in a dive. How about the 109? Well, diving from 3,400 metres, starting at 80 kilometres an hour, it reached 810 kilometres an hour in my test before levelling off at low altitude after 24 seconds. It would be much closer to the Hellcat at this, Hellcat at this point than the Spitfire. After another 20 seconds of level flight, the 109 is still travelling at 605 kilometres an hour, so it could possibly have kept up with the Hellcat and maybe even closed the range. Perhaps Trotters was right in deciding not to try and dive away. So let's see what he did instead. He's dived enough to gain some speed, and at this point I expected him to try and carry that speed up vertically into a loop or maybe a spiral climb. 
I also thought he might glance around to try and see where his opponents were. Instead he goes into a part horizontal, part diving turn, which was unfortunately the worst thing you could have done in this situation. That turn dropped him from 3660 metres, where he was doing nearly 300 kilometres an hour, down to 3100 metres, and then he compounds the situation by entering a horizontal turning battle with a Spitfire. His energy advantage is now lost and he has no way to get it back. Instead he's caught in a turn fight with two superior dogfighting planes only a thousand metres above the enemy fighter spawn. Unless he pulls off something miraculous, he's already as good as dead. I paused it there because something unexpected is happening. The Hellcat appears to be winning this dogfight with a Spitfire. How is this possible? Let's take a quick look at how the Spitfire pilots flying his plane. Here he is, entering a turning battle with Trotter's Hellcat, and I'll pause it again. A close look reveals that he's just engaging his landing flaps. That's the worst thing you can do in a Spitfire. The excellent high-speed dogfighters become, but become really sluggish and lose a lot of their turning ability if they slow down, and the landing flaps act like an air brake on this plane. Also, instead of backing his ability to outturn the Hellcat, he decides to initiate a scissors manoeuvre, which is a test of rolling speed, where the Hellcat holds the advantage. Switching back to Trotter's viewpoint. The poor choices made by the Spitfire pilot have presented his plane as a tempting target, and Trotters now focuses on trying to shoot him down. He can see that Snowy doesn't quite have guns on him yet, so he's hoping to kill the Spitfire, then turn his attention to the 109. And he almost gets the Spitfire here. As he continues to dogfight the Spitfire, cannon shells start whistling past his plane, and that Snowy, he's almost got a firing solution now. The Spitfire, hampered by his landing flaps, is losing more and more speed, and finally stalls his plane, and Trotters executes the coup de grace. The time has run out for his Hellcat. As he shoots down the Spitfire, Snowy gets a gun solution, and makes no mistake, finally exacting revenge for the loss of his bombers. Here's that last sequence from the Spitfire's point of view. He's lost all of his speed due to those landing flaps, and you can see Snowy on Trotter's tail. The Spitfire stalls. And there you have it. So what can we learn from all this? Well, firstly, work hard on situational awareness. In my previous Analyze This video, Razor 1103 gave a great demonstration of how to avoid tunnel vision and stay aware of your surroundings. Secondly, don't waste energy on hard maneuvers when you're flying a thousand meters above the enemy fighter spawn. And lastly, if you are jumped by one or more superior dogfighters, and you're unsure of your relative energy states, it's probably better to dive and run. Chances are you can drag them to low altitude and to friendly fighters, guaranteeing they'll lose their planes even if they succeed in shooting you down. That's all for this video. Thanks Trotters for sending in the replay. Until the next one, I'll see you in the skies.